Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a quick demonstration on how to knit reversible jacquard on your Superba double bed knitting machine. Reversible jacquard, um, all it is, is a knitting technique where it looks the same on the front as it does on the back, except reversed. So it's a full needle rib technique. It's a little bit easier to do this than to do slip jacquard or the method of double bed jacquard that's used on the Japanese knitting machines where you've got a color changer and you're knitting one color for two rows and then the next color for two rows. Um, and the reason for that is you're knitting two colors at the same time exactly how you do for Fair Isle. So in that way it's, it's easier to knit. Um, it does have drawbacks as well because on your front bed for this technique you've actually got two colors on each hook or needle so it, it makes it a little bit thicker and there are some specialized settings that you need to be careful of when you're setting up for that so you know each technique has its pluses and minuses you actually can do slip slip uh, jacquard on these machines as well they call it Norwegian jacquard in the manuals and you can do it either with a color changer if you have one or with the jacquard claw but we're not going to worry about that today just reversible today and in order to do it, you'll need a patterning input device. So either the light scanning box, the pressure pad, the pegboard, or in my case, Superbanet. And you'll need the second yarn guide, which looks like this, and allows you to run two yarns at the same time. So that's it. I'm gonna go ahead and cast on for full needle rib over about 50 stitches, and then we can, uh, we can get started. So to start off with, you want to cast on for full needle rib in order to do that, you want to make sure that your flow combs are set to alternate so that when you have two needles out at the same time, because they're all going to be in work, they're not crashing together. That's what that's all about. And you want to make sure your bed spacing is set on about three. It doesn't really matter at the moment, but so I'm going to go ahead and cast on over about 50 stitches here. And I am using a, a rather thin acrylic yarn. This is Tam Kitty 214. Um, it's quite thin you don't want to use anything thick for this or you're going to have nothing but jams. So that's why I'm using such a thin yarn. So just go ahead and get all set up and then uh, make sure your carriages are on their smallest stitch size and knit across for your zigzag row. And then you can hang your comb and your weights. I'm just going to use a small weight for now. Knit your circular rows. And then change to your knitting size and knit back across on both carriages again or both beds I mean and you'll notice I'm using a different carriage this time than I have in the past this is my spare I'm having some trouble with my uh, my main carriage so it looks a little bit different but it works exactly the same the only difference is it doesn't have the frog eye attachments here for the color changer that would be a problem but I'm not using it so no big deal Oops. There we go. Satisfied. All right, so once we've got a nice base here, we've got a few inches of knitting that I can hang some edge claws on, you need to go ahead and add your second color, and then we'll get everything set up in Superbanet. So, it's actually easier to do this when you can drop the beds, but I can't, so I'm just going to kind of move the front bed carriage out of the way and add my second yarn guide. It's not easy to do it without lifting up, so I'm going to lift this up. I like to thread it as I put it on. I am told that you don't have to do that, that it will automatically thread, but I'm paranoid about uh, everything dropping on the ground. I just add that like so and then I will thread up my white yarn and run that through there but first things first I'm going to go over to the computer and get Superbanet set up to knit a pattern. So now that we're ready to set up for knitting reversible double bed jacquard I've come over to my laptop and I have opened up my Superbanet software and we're going to set it up exactly as we would for Fair Isle knitting. 
So I do, I do apologize if you're using a light scanning box or a pressure pad model or something else. I don't have one of those available, so I'm not 100% sure on how you would set those up. But my assumption is set it up exactly the same way as you would for fair isle knitting, because in this case, the patterning is the same um, when it's being sent to the machine. The difference is in how you set up your carriages, and obviously because you're working on two beds. So with that said, I'm going to select a pattern to knit. There's a whole bunch that come with the software. I'm just going to select this one. And the important thing is that it says method two here, which is fair isle knitting and that it's only two colors. If you have more than that, it's not going to work. So go back to your machine if you haven't done so already and set up your cursors and cursor stops. Make sure your cursor is set at the zero position and your cursor stops are set to 15 needles outside of your work on each side. I've already done that. Click set zero and then I'm going to move my cursor over to the right, which is where my carriages are. And then we're going to click download to set up our patterning. So the interesting thing about this um, as I keep saying, is that you're going to be knitting it exactly the same way as Fair Isle. So there's nothing else you need to select. You don't have to select any of these, Fair Isle rib, jacquard, skip stitch, double bed, nothing. All you need to do is input your width, which is already done here for me, I've put in 50 before. And then if you wanted to change anything about the pattern, you can do that. You don't have to select double rows. Because we're knitting this differently than the Japanese machines, like I said before, we're not doing skip stitch and we're not knitting one color for two rows and then another color so you just leave everything as it is. I'm going to just preview to see how it's going to look. Okay, pretty good. You can just close that and uh, if you're happy with how everything is set up then you can just click OK. These are sort of the defaults that it will select for you automatically. Okay, we've sent it to the box. We can click knit and it will bring up the actual knitting window. So now, very important before you start knitting, you can see here it's making sure that our carriage is on the right, it is, so that looks fine. I'm going to click knit in order to start knitting. So now as soon as I start knitting from the right, it's going to start patterning for me, but I want to take you back to the machine and show you how to set up your carriages. When you're setting up your carriages for this technique, there's a couple of things that are very, very important. So firstly, you can see I've threaded up my second yarn here. Very important, otherwise it's not going to work. <laughs> so make sure you have your second yarn guide attached with both of your yarns in the appropriate places. That's step one. Then you're going to come over here for the back carriage. And for this, we're going to just leave our stitch dial exactly where it was for our double bed uh, full needle rib. So I've actually had to make a couple of changes to the sample I was knitting and now I found it worked better on three and one tick there. So I'm going to just leave that exactly where it was. Then we need to put our needle return levers into the upward position and then I'm just going to cancel this because we need to push the knit key and the jacquard key at the same time and depress them both. If you are used to knitting fair isle that's exactly the same way as you would set the carriage for knitting fair isle on the back. Then on the front carriage we're going to leave pretty much everything exactly the same. The needle return levers stay the same, these lily buttons stay the same, they're down. But what we want to do here, you can see I've got that on three and one tick as well, we need to increase this by three full numbers in order to have the appropriate amount of clearance to knit both of those yarns on the front bed. So I'm going to go ahead and increase that to six and one tick and that's going to stay like that for the duration of our reversible double bed jacquard work. So as well as having the appropriate yarn thickness, it's, it's really important to play with your settings for both of these uh, dials to make sure that it's going to work. The sort of general rule of thumb is three sizes larger, but you know, go up or down a little bit if you need to, if you're having problems pushing the carriage or if something doesn't feel right. Once we've done this and uh, we've already set everything up in Superbanit, so we are ready to go ahead and get knitting. So I will take you back to the machine. All right, so because we are already set up in the software and we've set up our carriages, we are good to go. Just make sure your cursor's at the right hand side. And uh, I like to do a last double check of everything before I get going. And you can see what it's doing. It's knitting selected needles on the back in the white second yarn and the other needles in the blue first yarn. And then each needle on the front 
is knitting both colors. And then what happens when it puts one color to the front of the uh, hook and one color behind it, that's how you end up with the pattern on the back. So I'll show you that obviously when I take it off the bed, but just go ahead and keep doing that. It's gonna be a little bit harder to push the carriages, but if you found the right stitch size and your yarn is flowing freely and everything's good to go, it shouldn't be a horrible grind. So if you're finding you have to really muscle that carriage, check your stitch size. And in actual fact, it usually means you need to go smaller, which is really counterintuitive, but try it out. And you can see it's a little tougher at the end. And uh, just make sure you move up your edge claws every so often if you're using them. And you can feel this is producing quite a stiff fabric. So it's not going to be suitable for everything. It's not going to be suitable for something that you want a lot of drape or, you know, anything that you want really to move a lot. It's good for a blanket. I've done blankets with it. But anyways, carry on knitting until it's the length that you want. And then what you would do is just go back to knitting regular full needle ribs. So cancel everything out in superbinate. Cancel all the settings on your carriage and back to the proper stitch size on the front bed as well. And then just to the V and uh, on both carriages. Take off your jacquard key. And then carry on in full needle rib until you're ready to take it off. And then if you're working on a swatch, I'm not going to bother casting off. I'm just going to take it off. So let me go ahead and do that off camera and then I will show you what this watch looks like. Okay, moment of truth. So I finished off in full needle rib and took the piece off the machine and here's what you get. That's the front of the piece. You can see the pattern. I'll move my arm. You can see the pattern that I showed you before in superbinate. Looks pretty much as described. And then if you flip it over, this is the back of the piece. So it's pretty close to reversible at least the effect is anyway. Um, so the technical term for this is plating jacquard. So what it's doing is plating the two colors on the front bed, which is why you get sort of a mix of the two yarns. So, I mean, does it look like an exact reversed image? No, but the overall effect is, is really good, especially from a little bit, you know, from a distance. So that's what it looks like. It produces a thicker fabric with some stretch. You know, it's not overly stretchy, so you'd have to make sure that this was right for the garment or whatever you were making. And the, the yarn choice will have a lot of influence on that as well. So this yarn is probably at the top end of what I would use for this, thickness-wise. And it's produced a fairly thick, substantial fabric. Okay, and it doesn't roll, so that's nice. It doesn't curl at the edges like stockinette does because it's a double bed fabric. Um, something like this you might want to use for an outerwear piece. It would be great for cut and sew of like a cardigan or a, an outerwear coat cardigan type thing. I've used it for blankets in the past where you've got something on the front and something on the back, but you don't want to make two and sew them together. So there are, you know, the, the sky's the limit, whatever you want to use it for. But again, front, back, looks great. I also have a PDF version of these instructions. If you're in the Superba group on Facebook, you'll already have those. I'm going to put it on my blog. It might already be there, actually, but I'm going to put a link down below, heatherismakingstuff.com. And if there's anything else I can think of that would help you, I'll put them down below in links. If you're not already in the Ravelry group for these Superba machines, you should definitely join it. There's lots of people in there that know lots about these machines, more than I ever will. And uh, there's all sorts of resources in there. Um, there's links to the Superba Vault as well, which I keep talking about, but there's a handy document in there, sort of a cheat sheet of different kinds of jacquard, double bed jacquard that you can do on this machine, because there are many, many kinds. But anyway, so that's our look at reversible jacquard. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you like what you've made. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. And uh, if you want to be notified of all my videos, feel free to subscribe. And if it helps somebody and you want to share, you can do that too. I'll see you next time. Thanks again and happy knitting.